Hi everyone, this is Adrienne Green, Realtor with Samson Properties, and I'm here with Jill Kurtz of Kurtz Digital Strategy, and we are talking via Zoom today, and she is going to share with us some tips for how to be effective with email marketing. So she's gonna go over six tips that are going to add a lot of value and help everyone here to be more effective with their email marketing to their clients and network. So thank you, Jill, for sharing your wisdom with us today. And let's go ahead and start with tip number one. Great, well, thanks for inviting me, Adrienne. And you know, we're doing our appropriate social distancing here, um, having this conversation by Zoom. And you know, I, I serve um, a lot of small businesses and in this time of you know all the restrictions due to the COVID-19 virus, lots of people are having to rely on their email much more than they ever have to communicate with their customers. And so that's why I got inspired to offer these um, suggestions. So hopefully these can help you. If you've already got an active email program, that's great. Or maybe they can help you to um, you know, put the right pieces in place to get um, your email marketing program working harder for you. Um, so my first tip, tip number one, is to actively build your email marketing list. Um, you may have discovered when you wanted to kind of dust off your email marketing, because now that's a great way for you to reach your customers, um, that you haven't changed your list in a while. Um, and that's not a place where any business wants to be. You wanna make sure that you always have um, a very active list that reflects your latest customers and your latest prospects. And I, and I think you had a story to share about that, Adrian. Right, last year I found that I had not been actively maintaining my email list. I use MailChimp and I hadn't been putting people I'd been meeting into my contact list there. So I had to update my system and now what I do every month before I send out my newsletter via MailChimp, I export all my contacts from my database and I just import them straight into MailChimp. That way throughout the month, I'm only entering people into my normal database. I'm not having to put them in twice. I'm not having at the end of the month, remember who did I put in my database? Who do I need to put in MailChimp? I just export everything from my database straight into MailChimp, and I know MailChimp is completely updated before I send the next email. So that's the system I put in place to make sure that my email marketing list is always updated. Yeah, that's a great way to handle it. And, um, you know, really just keeping an Excel spreadsheet with names and email addresses um, that you just, you know, throw, you know, whether you met somebody at a networking event or you met somebody um, through uh, uh, somebody else or on Facebook, you just throw all those contacts in there and if you just get into the routine of updating your list before you send out your next message, um, it's, you know, it's just, a, it's just a matter of taking that step. Um, my second tip is to make sure that every message you send provides value to the person that you are reaching. Um, that's going to be different depending on what your business is, but you want to send people a message that's meaningful to them that you know, when they take the time to read your message, that they know why you sent it. Um, and a lot of creating value is really just paying attention to the message itself. You want to make your message really nice and simple. Um, the latest research shows that messages of 200 words or fewer are most effective. That's not a lot of words. Um, you want to use short sentences and short words, and you, you know, don't impress people with your vocabulary. Just talk in the same way you would if you were having a conversation with them because that's the easiest thing for us to, um, to say. And um, a latest thing is, you know, emoji, these little, um, these little icons. They uh -huh. can say a lot with no words. Um, so, yeah, so if there's an emoji that can really, you know, commute communicate to people what you want to tell them, go ahead and use it, you know, and, and, and everything doesn't have to be words. Um, and make sure that you're speaking, especially in these, um, in these times, but always when we're marketing, speak to the needs and concerns of your audience. Um, I was just talking to a business and she does, um, she does interior consultations to help people make sure their spaces work well for them. And she was really concerned that this would be, you know, it would seem unseemly for her to be talking to people. But I told her, I said, people really need you now. You know, they're stuck in their homes. You know, they're figuring out that 
you know, my husband and I are both working from home and there's only one desk and that doesn't work, um, you know. And so I was encouraging her to approach it, not with her package of services, but approach it in a way that helps people understand that she understands what is happening when you're spending all your time in your home and you're not used to doing that and the right. things that she can do to help people feel more comfortable in their own space. Mm -hmm. um, tip number three is kind of a little counterintuitive because when you write an email, what's the first thing you write? Generally, it's the subject line, right? No, it should be the last thing you write. Um, I really recommend you write your message, understand exactly what you're saying, and then write a subject line that really leads people to that messages. Um, we all have very busy inboxes, and so the subject line is what is going to make determine if I'm going to read that message or if I'm going to delete it before I hear. He um, before I read it. Um, and on the same note, most, um, most email programs now support what they call a pre-header. And so there's some text that'll show up in the email box. Pay a lot of attention to that text too. So that's tip number three. Write that subject line and the pre-header last and make sure they're, um, they really explain to people why they wanna take the time to open your message. Mm -hmm. Tip number four is Make it clear to people why you're sending the message. That's typically called a call to action. Uh -huh. What is it that you want them to do, right? Are you sending the message because you're changing your delivery order time and they need to order today instead of their typical time tomorrow? Make that really clear. Don't bury that. I'm getting so many messages lately that start with, you know, we're trying to do everything we can to keep you safe and our employees safe. And two paragraphs later, is buried this message of something that is an action I need to take. Mm -hmm. um, so don't, don't bury the action. Make it really clear what you want people to do. And then after you tell them what you want to do, you can assure them you're doing everything um, to keep them safe and to keep your employees yeah. safe. But, you know, make sure they understand the purpose of your message. Mm -hmm. Okay, tip number five is keep to one goal in your message. Um, and an exception to this, um, Adrian puts out a fabulous monthly newsletter. Well, that's a newsletter. Newsletters by nature have more than one thing. But for the most part, your email marketing, you should keep it to one topic. Um, research has shown um, that people will read the first thing. You know, most people will read the first thing. Fewer will read the second. Almost nobody reads the third thing. So basically what you're doing is you're adding um, a false impression that you're communicating because you're, you, they, people just keep it to one thing. And that's, you know, and then they will get your message. They'll understand what you wanted to communicate with them. They'll understand what you wanted them to do. And, um, you know, if it's five things down in your email, they're not going to see it. So don't frustrate yourself and don't frustrate them. Keep it to one main thing. Um, and then my sixth tip, my bonus tip, tip number six, is to proofread. Um, you know, I, I know I get this way. Uh, you know, you finish the message, you write that subject, you're just feeling so good about it, you just are itching to hit that send button. Um, don't. Take time, stop, and just read your message whole cloth. Adrienne um, re, uh, mentioned she uses MailChimp, which is a great email marketing program. It gives you a button to preview, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> because, <laughs> right? Um, you know, how many times have you gotten in your inbox a message, and then like two seconds later, it was like, whoops, didn't mean that. Um, right. And um, I was telling Adrienne earlier, one of my most common typos is I tend to use, uh, tend to write not when I mean now. So I'll be typing something and I'll say, I'm now going to do this. But what I have actually typed is I am not going to do this. It's a very different meaning and spell check is not going to pick that up because they're both valid words. So um, you want to take the time to proofread your message because you clearly, you know, you want to tell people what you want to tell them, uh, not what you don't want to tell them. Um, and I think you said you've had that experience, Adrian. Yes, yes. And what I always do is I send a test email so I see it in my email inbox as the customer or the client or my friend is going to see it um, because I feel like that change in format 
allows my mind to view it with some fresh eyes uh, so that I can more easily spot things that seem out of place instead of, you know, if I'm reading it in the same format that I wrote it in, um, my mind is overlaying any typos or errors with what I meant <laughs> and I don't always spot them as much. So I like to send that test email and view it there um, to prevent to prevent issues. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, and that's a great thing. And what I always do at a minimum, I like to do that as well. But as a minimum, I tend to um, to walk away from a message for a couple of seconds. Um, and you know, even even in these times when there's a rush, and I, I'm doing a lot of you know, kind of you know, everybody's responding to the latest guidance and the latest direction. And you know, I've had to do a lot of very quick emails for clients. But even then you know, I'll compose the whole email and I literally will get up and walk away from the screen for a couple of minutes just so you can kind of give it those fresh eyes. So it's, um, and it doesn't add that much time and it's, huh. it's worthwhile to not be saying what you don't mean. <laughs> well, or so, my most common issue with emails right now is forgetting the attachments and I get up and I walk away from my desk and within, within five minutes I, I, I realize I'm doing something totally different and my mind says, I forgot that attachment I said I was on. <laughs> and I go back yeah. to my desk and reply to the email and say, here's the attachment. <laughs> right. So there you go. Uh, if I had, if I had just paused before sending the email and given myself a minute to do something else, I probably would have remembered before I actually sent it and looked a little bit better there. Yep. Yep. So, so those were my six tips. Um, I, I would just conclude with saying, you know, if you if you have a business and you're trying to figure out how to, um, you know, to best serve your customers at this time, email is an excellent tool to do that. Mm -hmm. If you follow these tips and you make sure that every message is meaningful, people will be so grateful to you. Um, you know, you might be changing your business hours, you might be changing your business practices, anything you can do to help people kind of feel a sense of control and normalcy and that you're still accessible to them is actually very comforting. Um, so as long as, you know, as long as there's a really good reason, don't just send an email out every day just because you're sending an email out every day. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's a great way to keep connection um, with people in times when we can't be actually together, so. Right, right. No, that's, that's wonderful and very relevant for right now. And hopefully, you know, business owners can take these tips and use this time to improve their systems and then keep these improvements in place going forward, even once we have all the tools in our toolkit of in-person and other kinds of, you know, meetings in addition to our um, socially distanced options. So Absolutely. Uh, this is fabulous. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us, Jill. I think it'll help a lot of people as they are navigating uh, potentially new terrain or using this time to improve their email marketing, whether it's new or um, continuing for them. So thank you very much. And guys, uh, thank if you. you like this video, make sure to click the thumbs up uh, below the like button. And in the description, I will have all of Jill's contact information, uh, her Kurtz Digital Strategy website and everything like that. So if you are a small business owner uh, and you'd like to work with Jill in the future, you can reach out, learn more about her. And Jill, I know you work with a lot of local businesses, but um, considering your specialty is digital strategy. Do you work with people, um, you know, via Zoom and remotely as well? Absolutely. Yeah, I have clients. I have clients here, there, and everywhere. Um, yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's actually why I really enjoy uh, working on digital because, uh, you know, you're not bound by space. So, yeah. Uh, anyhow, be happy to help anybody. And even if it's just to, um, you know, uh, dig into some of these tips, um, I, uh, I really do enjoy helping everybody to succeed um, with their marketing. So uh, feel free to reach out, contact me if I can help you in any way. Wonderful. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Jill. And uh, again, Adrian Green, Realtor at Samson Properties. And I'm happy to share Jill Kurtz, a Northern Virginia treasure here with her uh, wealth of wisdom. And I appreciate everybody watching today. <laughs>